Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are transforming milk cartons. We are giving them a makeover and we are unleashing the magic of upcycling. In other words, we're turning trash into treasure. Let me show you exactly what we'll be making. Project number one, pouches. Project number two, I'm not entirely sure what to call this. We can call it compartmentalized storage or a pocket folder or a mini folder or a pouch book. It's good for storing all sorts of stuff like ephemera, even it can be a mail center for your incoming mail. Project number three, we are making this beauty. It's a mini album with all sorts of fun stuff. And it's a little bit different to what I usually do because there's no bindings. And project number four, we're really going back to basics. We are making a coin purse or a little wallet or ephemera storage, postage stamps, stickers, all sorts of stuff, a little mini wallet. And this is probably the easiest and the quickest one to make. So all of the projects I've just shown you use the whole milk carton, but we will also touch on things like this, you know, where you are actually uh, cutting it down into smaller sections to create more stuff. So what I'll do is in order to be able to show you how to make all of these examples, I will demonstrate the construction of each project, but I won't be beautifying it. However, rest assured, I will show you and tell you all the information you need in order to replicate exactly what I've done here. Side note, if you do want to make all of these projects, it's a good idea to start saving your milk cartons or any Tetra Pak packaging like this. So it can be juice cartons or anything that comes in this kind of packaging. And also, if you only buy your milk that comes in this kind of packaging, fresh milk, that's totally cool. Make sure you're subscribed because I will be making a video using these as well. First things first, you need to open up your carton. Then you need to wash it well. When it's washed, let it air dry. Or use a soft cloth to dry. Perfect, your milk cartons are now ready. Okay, let's start with project number one. Project number one is pouches. So they are very straightforward to make and quite easy. We're leaving the inside untouched, but the main component of this project is covering the outside of the pouch. Again, as I always say, you can make this as elaborate or as simple as you wish. So first thing we're going to do is open the carton all the way and then just flatten it down completely. Maybe even use something like this, a bone folder or your scissors to flatten it down. This is quite thick, heavy duty kind of carton, so it needs a bit of work here. Another good idea is if you're going to be saving these milk cartons to make a project in the future, flatten some of them and lay them under something heavy and that way you get a nice, really flat kind of a package. Now it, it's still, you know, there's a bit of resistance. It's not completely flat. Okay, next. I am going to straighten this edge here. All right, here we go. We throw that in the bin and now decide how large you want your flap to be. This area here, if it's too short, it won't be able to close properly. And if it's too long, then you minimize the space of your pouch. So I kind of eyeball it and let's say, I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Another thing I also like to keep in mind, there's a seam on the inside here where the cardboard is glued together. All of the cartons have the same thing. Take note of where that seam is and have it turned towards you when you're doing the flap. It's not awfully important, but when you open the pouch, you don't want to be seeing that seam right there. That's my thinking anyway. Now that I made that fold, what I'm going to do is I need to cut this whole section off. Perfect. And you can see 
where this is going so we've just got the, that's the flap okay so now i want to do like an envelope triangular kind of a flap so i'll just do this excellent all right that's the pouch cut down and you can see that's that's all that is let's talk about covering and the closure this here is a fabric it's all quilting fabric uh, that I used. But how do you glue the fabric on? You could potentially use a hot glue gun or rather hot glue, but that can very easily peel off. If you use PVA glue, that might also peel off because this is a very shiny surface. So what you would need to do is sand all of this down and then use PVA glue. Or when I say PVA glue, it's just white glue, just glue, any glue. You can also paint it. I think painting it will be the quickest way, but that's another thing. You have to sand it down and maybe even apply gesso and then paint over it. Otherwise, the paint is going to peel off. And if you do this, it, you know, it will scratch off. But I'm not, I'm not 100% I could be wrong. You might have to try it. Now, the way that I applied this fabric, you can see how beautifully flush and completely glued down this fabric is and it's actually done in numerous sections you can see everything is so flush and beautifully glued down and the way that i achieved that is by using of course the fabric and double-sided tape and this is some heavy duty carpet double-sided tape that i found in an op shop and it's perfect for this kind of thing because it's quick and it's easy you just stick this down onto the fabric and then you peel the backing layer off and you have a sticky fabric that can be stuck onto pretty much anything. Okay, we'll talk about the closures in a moment. I just wanted to show you this here. This piece of fabric, uh, this is what it was. I was in a $2 shop and it's pretty much exactly what I've just shown you. But you see, it's fabric on one side and then it's this double-sided tape on the other side. So that's actually what gave me the idea to make my own. And if you don't have a really thick carpet one like I do you might have thinner you know this is still quite thick but you know any double-sided tape that you have and then you can just apply strips of it across your fabric and then you have this cool craft item that you can use on lots of projects and then this one here is covered in double-sided foil tape which is this one here it's like a double-sided tape but it's foil and again another lucky find in an op shop and I've been told that this is actually like an electrical uh, or duct you know heating duct insulation kind of thing and these are remnants and i mean when i saw this i was like oh my goodness i'm gonna have so much fun with this and it's very very sticky so anyway well that's what that is and i just used it to cover my the whole patch so we've mentioned a few different ways of covering your pouches for all of the projects i've done pretty much the same way of covering so i won't be repeating this information in this video but Another thing that you can do is glue book pages and napkins and all sorts of like decoupage over them. But I think you will need to sand it down and you know, it just, look at that. It unglues so easily, which I don't know if that's a problem to be honest with you. It doesn't have to be a problem. It's like a little patch. You can't kind of slip it off. I don't know. And uh, it's something that you can play around with. I was going to overlay this with some napkin, just one ply of napkin over the top. But to be honest with you, this is quite a lot of work, you know, but it's fun work. So anyway, it's an option that you can run with. Why not? Okay, let's move on to the closure. Very simple. I mean, you can see what I've done here. I have a brad on there and I have a brad on there. And I usually don't like to have the feet of the brad visible on the inside. And it's not for aesthetic purposes or anything like that. I just feel like when you're putting things inside the pouch, they might get stuck into the brad feet or the prongs, okay? So with that brad, what I did is I put it through the material, this extra piece of materials that I've got going on here. I put it through that and then glued the whole piece down. And then elastic closure. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Very, very easy. And there's a knot under here. I just tied that knot to keep that elastic in place. I love how that looks. Okay, now this one here, exactly the same way. This whole, you know, two cardstock circles and a little brad was put through this piece of material and then the material was glued down onto the pouch. And then quite simply, a long piece of string and that wraps around like that. And then I have some beads down here just to make it a little bit more special. And that's that one done. Another thing you can do for closure, of course, is Velcro or hook and loop dots. 
these things lots of these things you find at two dollar shops and that's a pretty cool closure hook and loop another thing you can do is this kind of thing i forget what these are called but i have a whole set that i got on ebay and you can add it to you can add them to any project and it's just fun i just love making pouches this is from i don't know a wallpaper sample book so that's another thing you can use here it is. I was looking for it to show you, and I don't even know what they're called anymore. Maybe snap closure. And you get those bits, and then you get this gun, and then it's just so easy to apply it onto a project. But in any case, I don't know. A snap closure, maybe. Snap buttons, actually. And then you can use little magnets like I did on this project here. This is my the last video that I have uploaded. And if you do use my magnets, they would have to be quite strong magnets because that's quite, you see how that just wants to pop up. So if I was to use magnets, I would lay this something under something really heavy for quite a while to get it really flat, right? And then the magnet would actually stay. Another type of closure you can do is just elastic, maybe elastic lace or a headband. Here's a headband. I would have to shorten this, but just to demonstrate, you can have a closure like that. And imagine if this was covered in beautiful material. I think I've covered pretty much everything. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and another thing that you can use is washi tape, a whole lot of washi tape to cover the outside of the box, uh, but apply glue first and then washi tape. Or of course you can leave it just the way it is. It does not have to be covered. Uh, but it really depends on what you're going to use it for. If you're going to use it for like a, a ephemera storage in your craft room, you want to have a box full of them. How cool would that be? You know, I mean, if it's for you, you don't really need to cover it. I mean, it does look nicer when it's covered. Imagine a box of these. How beautiful would that be? But of course, you can leave it just the way it is. All right, let's move on to project number two which is the pocket folder and this is a really really cool project that i absolutely love and there's not as much work involved as it may appear at first all right so let me show you how i made this what i have in there for now are these i have lots of these papers that are the same size this is all from Taperology. Look at all of these beautiful papers. Anyway, that's what I'm using it for. And the good thing is that with this closure, you can cinch it in. We can do all sorts of different closures. We'll talk about that. Cinch it in and nothing can fall out, you know, and it really depends on how you're planning to use this book. If it's going to sit on your desk, you don't need the closing mechanism, you know, but if you're going to have it displayed like this, perhaps, then it might be a good idea. Okay, enough talking. Let's start making. Okay, so we're starting with the building the envelopes or what should I call it? A folder type first. Okay, and the way that we do that is you start off with your milk carton and in exactly the same way as what we've done before you want to flatten the sides even better if they have laid flat under something for a little while and you do as many as you want to use so in this book i have four milk cartons you can do five six seven eight and then you're gonna have to have a wider spine so i feel like i mean this is a milk carton as well we'll get to that next the cover so i used five milk carton cartons in this project and i feel like i probably could fit you know i could fit another two maybe even three in there for demonstration purposes i'm just going to use two because i don't actually have that many milk cartons left and I still have other things to show you. Okay, so we've done that. Next thing you want to do is make sure that all of your cartons are trimmed down. We don't want any of this crazy stuff happening. We want nice, neat tops, right? But you want them all to be exactly the same. That's very important. You can do this two ways. You can cut your first one down and then you can use that as a template for your all of your other ones. Or you can maybe go stack them like this use some binder clips or whatever you have to hold it in place perfect nice and even everywhere and then the obvious next step which is trimming it down and we're just gonna pretend that i have more than just two next thing you want to do is prepare the cover the cover can be really anything but i'm sticking with the milk carton theme and uh, in fact that's what I used in my project. So I'm going to show you how I did the cover. So of course, we're just going to get rid of the side panels.
All right, so there's the beginning of our cover. Now this is very, very thick and very, very messy in there. I This is what I do. I'm gonna open this up and cut all of this off. All that extra bulk is going. All right, that's starting to look a bit better. Now here you have this pointy bit that makes this whole thing very uneven and wonky. So I like to cut off as much of that as I can without ungluing it completely. Like I don't wanna separate these two pieces. So I'm just gonna get really close. Oh my goodness, look what I did. That's exactly what I didn't wanna do. But now that I'm here, actually, I'm just gonna do this. And that this size would actually be perfect for just two pouches. Look at that, oh, well, there you go. Let's pretend I did that on purpose. But when you're cutting the underneath, Maybe don't open it all the way up and then, you know, I, I think I kind of left it. I don't know how I did it. I just trimmed off a whole a, a whole lot of this without actually going all the way to that line. Okay, that's what I did, but kind of stuffed it up in this video. But that's fine. I'm going to go with it because there are no mistakes in this craft. And I actually really like the idea of a thinner spine. When you have this cut down, all of these edges are very uneven and messy and horrendous. So I like to have nice, neat, straight edges. And at this point, we're going to cut the top. So we want a nice, straight, you know, we don't want any wonky business happening. So, okay. And then on the inside, I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. And do the same on the other side. All right, that's looking pretty good. I had to trim that spine a little bit, so it's all the same. Bit of masking tape to the rescue. All right, next, you see where we are going with this. We have a cover and we have the pouches, okay? And now, here's what I did. First thing I did is reinforce the spine. So when I trimmed that extra piece off, there's there is a fold right in the middle of that spine so that fold tended to go inwards and outwards very easily and we don't want any of that we want a very thick sturdy spine you can see what i've done here this is the next project i'll talk about so you can see how i have reinforced that spine on both outside and inside probably going a bit overboard you probably only need to reinforce on the outside or the inside, but I did actually exactly the same on this one here. So it seems like a lot of hard work, but trust me, it really isn't. It's just, I'm using, you can use a cereal box, anything really. And then you just trim it down to the size of your spine. So you want your piece to be slightly narrower than the inside spine so that your thing can close, but you want it to be the exact same height as the spine okay and then you do another piece you just prepare your pieces you have those two pieces ready pop them to the side i'm just going to uh, show you how i achieved this kind of effect i really love how that looks but if you want your thing to be just covered in one fabric then you would glue your pieces down at this point all right next thing you want to do is grab your fabric and it has to be obviously as long as your project that you're making I might actually demonstrate this part properly because, I don't know, just because it might come in handy. All right, let me show you how to do this. So you have your piece of fabric that's long enough and you don't need to iron it, believe it or not. Just get your piece of fabric ready. Now you have your cover and we're going to apply glue all over. It doesn't matter what kind of glue you apply as long as you don't have chunks of glue pulling because it's gonna it's gonna go through the fabric you can always also use your diy book cloth i have a video on that up there but i've used them all up and i haven't made any more so now i'm just doing it this way all right you spread your glue so that you don't have large puddles of glue you can use pva glue you can use wood glue you can use fabric glue whatever glue you have this glue is not what's going to be holding the book together in the long run. So, you, okay, you pop it down on top of your fabric and then you smooth it down. Okay, perfect. And now you can see I have a wrinkle here. The way that you get all of those wrinkles out is by tightening when you're doing this step, okay? And for this step, I use double-sided tape. Four pieces of double-sided tape applied to the corners over here. If you don't have double-sided tape, you can just apply glue to the corners. Okay, remove the backing. 
and now it's time to fold the corners in you can see all of those wrinkles and when you're doing that you want to tighten the fabric don't go overboard because you don't want to be bending and stretching too much just tighten slightly and then also when the book closes that's going to tighten that fabric further okay next apply your double-sided tape across the top and bottom remove the backing just from one side for now and this is the important part here these all the parts are important but in any case when you're folding the corners get that fabric down see that and then fold up okay that's what i'm going to be doing here and now as you're going along you pull the fabric up and down and again, up and down. We're really tightening that fabric. Then when you get over here somewhere, I didn't go all the way to the end, I'm gonna do this corner first, and then I'm gonna tighten this here. And I have finished this whole side, and you can see the effect so far. It's looking nice and tight up there. And now I'm gonna go and repeat the process. And now we're going to do the same thing here on the edges. Apply double-sided tape. And now again, we're trying to get those corners down. This isn't so much important for this project as it is for the next one I'm gonna do. But what we're trying to achieve with these corners is a really, really neat edge. See that there? This isn't important for this project, so you don't have to worry so much about that. Anyway, we'll come back to that when it's relevant. Do the same on the other side. All right, what do you think? That's looking nice and ironed. The edges are beautifully neat. You can iron if you want to, but you can also do it this way. All right, so that's the cover ready. That is the cover, or well, for now anyway. See that? You can use anything for a cover. If you want to have a completely, you, if you want to have a cover that covers the whole thing, then you can use cereal boxes and things like that. But I kind of like the look of this narrow cover and then these picking out. All right. Now to create these layers, you grab your two pieces that we've cut down before and you cover it in fabric and then that gets glued on to the outside of the spine. For the other one, the one on the inside, all I did is painted black just so that you can't see that cardstock. See in there that second piece just painted black. The cover is now ready to go. Well obviously when you apply your back piece and the front piece, I mean the inside piece. Okay, cover's done. You don't have to worry about covering the inside at all because the nature of this project is that that cover doesn't open up. It stays glued to the actual thing, which is why you don't have to worry about any of this sticky stuff. We want sticky stuff. I'm gonna pop my cover off to the side. And now for these, the way that I did these, even though it looks like they are all fully covered, it's actually, they're not all fully covered because of course that would be too much unnecessary work. And you can see what I've done there. When I open that up, the bits that are not seen are not covered, you see? So the only thing that I actually cover is the sides. However, for the very first and the very last pouch, I cover one side fully. So you can see in this one, this side that's not visible is not covered. The side here that's visible is covered fully, but you can't tell because the project looks seamless and beautiful all around on the outside. And it looks like the whole thing is covered unless of course you go remove things, which is another fun part of this project. The only thing you can remove is the first one and the last one. Anything you put in between, you can remove. And in fact, if you wish down the line to be adding more and more, you can go and add more and more, as many as you can fit in there. So let's see if I had six, I think six probably could be the maximum for this project that can actually fit in there. Probably wouldn't go any more than six. Okay, the covering part is pretty straightforward. And in fact, it's pretty much the same thing that I've spoken about when I was talking about the first project. So basically I used cloth and double-sided tape my wide one and again if you only have a narrow one you can do a few strips and you only really need to cover this section and that's it so a strip of something to cover that down uh, again you can also paint too so that will be a nice and quick way of doing it so we're just covering the edges of the pouches that are sitting between the two end pouches the two end pouches need the edges covered and then also 
the front. You don't even have to cover the whole front because the cover covers the front. There's only a little bit here that's visible. All right, so at this point, we have our cover done. We have our patches done and they're all covered and beautiful. Okay, now next thing you want to do, just leave it as it is if you want, or if you want to beautify it like I did with that ribbon, then this is how I did the ribbon. I just applied my ribbon onto the inside and I went all the way around. And I actually did this part before gluing that spine reinforcement so that the ribbon is under this second part of the spine. All right, you can see that the ribbon actually goes underneath that. So I do the ribbon before gluing that down. And the same thing here, I did the ribbon and that goes underneath. Now at this point for the closure, if you want to have a closure that goes over the top, I applied, you can just punch a hole there and then thread through some ribbon and that can tie a bow at the top of your pouches. Otherwise, what I did this here is a picture hanger hook. I'm not sure what they're called exactly, but this is what they are, very cheap supplies from a $2 shop. And basically that's what they look like. And then you have this and then you have this and you screw that into your wall like that. And then you have a little hook for hanging picture frames. But there, these bits are actually perfect for closures and they're so cheap. So really it's a great thing to have in your toolbox. So of course, instead of using that nail, I use uh, bread uh, with these prongs that we've used before. So that just goes, whatever bread you have, this one probably wouldn't work perfectly. But you know, that looks so cool. And then that, the way it is, goes through here, my cover, all the way onto the inside. I open the prongs and then I have this thing there. I can tie anything I want onto that. So you can see that there. That's all that is. How cool is that? It's just a closure. And then because I have these bulldog clips here holding these two pouches in place, this, here, this one here is just for show, uh, just so we have a consistent look all across. And then I kind of threaded that through just so it looks like that bulldog clip has an actual function when in actual fact it doesn't it's just there for looks all right so that's the that's the cover and the closure and now all that's left to do is to attach the pouches to the cover let's say that's going to be my front and then you apply a whole lot of double-sided tape and glue i did both double sided tape all across the fabric and i actually used fabric glue the cheap brand fabric glue from kmart and any glue will do really and then you center your pouches the way you want them the first and the last one you glue that there perfect i didn't apply any glue i'm just demonstrating but that's kind of already staying there and then you get your next one i did it in order rather than doing first and last i did it in order and i wanted to make sure they're all kind of aligning perfectly when you once you get to your last pouch you align it with the one before it because you want them all to be in the same line. And then you kind of sit it there in the crease and you bring the back cover. So then the bulldogs come into play and you simply, you can even use a paper clip. You can use a stapler to hold them closed. You can get really creative with this part as well. Okay. And that's it. That's how we're keeping it closed. I think I covered everything. My initial idea was to bind, to use this binding so you can see the similarities here. Uh, imagine that this is the bottom of your milk cartons. And then if you were to bind it that way, I have a tutorial on this exposed uh, binding if you want to have a look, I'll link it up there. But if you were to do it this way, your bottoms of the pouches are bound in which means that you can't remove them once they well i suppose you could undo the knot and remove them but in that case you wouldn't need any bulldog clips up here to keep them in place you wouldn't even need a closure you know because even when this is not closed it stays sitting upright because of, we have a very sturdy and strong spine now in any case that's another option that you can explore all right, it's time to move on to project number three, which is the mini album. So we've already covered quite a bit and I, this isn't gonna take that long because the cover is, to, is done in exactly the same way as what was done in the previous project. Now, if you want to do something fun like this, once you have your separate piece for the spine ready to go, this one here, and let's pretend that it's covered in fabric. In fact, I might do that very quickly.
Okay, now if you want to sew the buttons on, you just get your buttons, you lay them on your project where you want them, and then you can poke some holes. And you can see where you've poked the holes at the back, and then you grab your needle and your thread, and then you just start from wherever. I'm gonna start from this middle one here, pop my button on, go back through the second hole you made, then you go through the next hole and the button and the hole next to it, and then you go to your last hole, through the button, and back to the inside. There we go, the buttons are sewn on, and now we're just gonna make a knot here at the back, and done, there's your little piece ready to go. And then you glue that directly onto your spine, so you can use whatever glue you have. I used fabric glue, I used double-sided tape as well, so I put double-sided tape down, then I used fabric glue, and I glued it down onto my spine, and there is that effect. All right, after you've done that, next, because the cover is visible on the inside, that will have to be covered with something. This is the back of a cereal box, and I did the same, of course, at the back here. But I just want to show you, before we do that, I want to show you, in case if you haven't done a mini album type before, you can do this cover, of course, and bind your signatures in, in which case you would glue this on top of the bound signatures. But what I did is a mini album type thing. So I'll show you how to do that. First, you get a piece of cardstock that's the same height as your book. Next, you want to do some score lines. So this will really depend on how wide your spine is. This spine here is double the width of the spine I'm demonstrating with. So these little notches here, you, you know, it really depends on how many you can fit in there. This one, I could definitely fit a lot more than what I did. But what we're doing is we're scoring some lines and we are creating these peaks and valleys, okay? So what I did on this piece is I scored at one centimeter or actually half an inch. All of the scores are done half an inch apart. So that's how it looks, scores and then half an inch apart. So what happens is you have one notch like this and then you have an empty space here. And then you have another notch and then again empty space. So this creates a whole lot of empty space here which is why I didn't end up using this piece. You have your cardstock that's exactly the same height as your journal, but you probably want it a bit longer than this. You want to start your scoring somewhere here. You want to leave empty space here with no score lines. I use my scoreboard for this. If you have one, great. If not, you can still do this without a scoreboard. You just use, you can draw lines and then use a ruler and make the score lines, all right? Let's start off here. I'm just gonna do one score line. Then I'm gonna do another one at half an inch from the first one. Then I'm gonna do another one at half an inch from the first one, okay? So far we have created a peak. You see that? Next is the empty space. So I'm gonna do less than half an inch. I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch from that score line. So we have a notch. We have a little bit of empty space, it's hard to see. Now I need to create another not notch and it's gonna be again, half an inch. So from that last score line, I'm gonna go half an inch, again, half an inch, and then again, empty space, quarter of an inch. So it depends on how many notches you want to have, you just keep going. I'm gonna do half an inch and half an inch for my last because I'm running out here. And then I might do empty space. Okay, I hope I'm explaining this properly. So we have a peak, empty space, then we have another peak, empty space, and another peak, and then empty space. It's gonna make sense in a moment, I promise. Okay, next thing you wanna do is glue that together. So I use double-sided tape. So you only are gluing the peaks or the notches. That's where your pages will go. We're leaving the empty space. Now I'm gonna go glue this notch. See what's happening there? Leave the empty space and now glue this notch together. All right, that's what we have. I hope that's not confusing. So just to show you again, this one here has six notches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a whole lot of empty space in between. 
and again it depends on how wide your spine is so for this piece here i'm going to fit in three notches okay so now going back to that inner spine and that piece that we've painted black now you want to glue this on top of that so again i've used double-sided tape but double-sided tape grips very quickly so if you were to pop this down and it's not perfect it's going to ruin this piece so what i do is i apply glue all over that okay here we go and then you want to center this and you want to glue it right on top perfect you see that glued right on top somewhere in the center and now this piece gets glued onto the inner spine And then you can score where the closure, where that uh, fold is from your cover. And here's what we have. We have those notches and that's glued in and perfect. Generally, I like to leave these bits a bit longer, maybe even taper them down so that black there isn't sticking out. And now what you would do is cover the, uh, the inside of that cover, right? You can see how I've tapered that black piece before I actually glued it down. And then I went ahead with a piece that uh, you know fits the front cover and i glued that on top of everything and that's hiding all of this messiness inside if you want to add a closure like i did here again the same way as the previous project i applied this closure first through and then i glued my inside piece here i actually have first sewn all the way around just for looks and then i glued it down I also glued this down, but you want to glue, glue it down with the book open. Wait for it to dry and then the, this piece goes on and then you do the same for the back cover and that's done. The only thing that's left to do is adding pages on the notches. That's pretty much how you do a mini album. So I'll show you here. You can see this one opens up and you can see that notch there. And then also you can have closed ones like this. This is a pocket, the notches on the inside, it's not visible. This one again opens up, so you can really have a whole lot of fun with this. You can create pockets like I did here, sewn right through and then glued it down onto the notch. Here I created two pockets and then I glued it down onto the notch. So because this is quite a large, we're using a milk carton, it's quite a large piece. What I did is I used file folders, these things, the inside where there's no prints or anything like that. And then I have this long piece of paper, right? That can open up. This is a remnant, so I'm gonna use this to demonstrate. I use two different types of file folders, these generic, you know, you know the ones, and that green one I've just shown you. So you can see I have one page of that one, and then I have one page of this one, and then on and on, right? So what you do is, first you have to determine how long the piece is going to be. So it goes from the spine, to the end of your cover right so i'm just going to mark here i'm going to cut right there and also another thing of course when you're cutting your pieces down you want them to be the exact same size as your spine or as the notches right okay so now at this point you have this thing let's just see if it's gonna there we go uh, i probably trimmed it down a little bit too much it's a bit short there but that's fine so now at this point you decide you know you have your pages we can only fit three pages in here because we have only the three notches, right? So you can decide what you wanna do. If you want them to open up, like I did on mine, you simply apply double-sided tape onto the edge here, or you can actually apply it directly onto the notch. Really doesn't matter where you apply it. And then you make sure everything is aligned, and then you glue that in, all right? So that's how this was done. If you wanna do a large pocket, like I've done here, then you would do the exact same thing. But next you would apply glue down the bottom here, all across, and then apply double-sided tape here, and then you close your pocket. So that's gonna be glued here and here, and you have your top pocket. Then this one here, I sewn in the middle because I wanted to create two pockets. This one here, I've added some pockets while my, and then I wanted the top to be completely closed, which is exactly what I did on this last page. So this last page, it doesn't open. It's just the way it is, right? So the way that you do that, you simply apply glue all over the whole thing, glue that to the notch, and then glue everything together. These embellishments that I've done, I've done everything before gluing my pages in. It's just easier to do it that way. Now for my closure, I did the same thing as what I've spoken about before. And then I attached 
a little bit of chain from a broken piece of jewelry and what's it called i always forget what they called like a claw clasp what's it called i don't know and that's the closure that's keeping this mini album closed another fun thing that you can do is do all of this before gluing this piece down and that way you can even use these spaces to bind in little signatures and then you have mini album slash junk journal kind of thing happening right because there's plenty of space there for some signatures and then once that's all is done then you go ahead and you glue this final piece down all right let's move on to project number four which is the coin purse you can really take this concept and run with it and you can really make it look quite special cover that cover the sides here you know but I'm going to show you the basics of making this and then you can take it in all sorts of different directions. So you have your empty milk carton and you open it all the way up and flatten it down. Trim off the top, make it nice and straight. Okay, and then we also want to open the other side. All right, and this is what we have at the moment. Both sides open. Okay, find that seam, that one, turn it towards you. Now make a fold, just eyeball it, doesn't matter and then make another fold for the flap and push the side gussets onto the inside like that. All right, here's what we have at the moment. And now back to your folds, this is what we have. So we have a whole lot of stuff that we don't need. So now what we're going to do is chop all of this up. Now this is the flap, so we only need this part, only need this part. All right, here we go. So everything's looking terribly messy at the moment, but that's okay. This is just how it's done for now. Now, what we wanna do is you see these sections here. We kinda wanna get rid of that part there as well. So I might just draw myself a line and now I know I need to cut that off as well. Do it any way you know how. I'm just gonna pop that in there and go in with my utility knife, all right? chop that off you can neaten these edges a little bit you can round the corners you can make it into an envelope kind of a flap chop those corners off we're just beautifying the thing we're, we're making it look nice and neat as neat as you can next you grab your stapler and you staple these two together perfect Next, what I did to hide that seam and to hide the staples and to like, make it look better, you can cover the whole thing. You can start off with something like this that's completely covered and then you can proceed to make. All right, for the closure, what I did actually for this covering, you can see I simply covered it in fabric. I didn't even cover the whole thing. You can see the edges of that milk carton. So I just applied a bit of fabric again, used the double-sided tape. And then for the closure, I use the bread. And this is also another thing that you can experiment with and use different types of closures. The ones that I've mentioned before with the hanging frame things with the hook and loop or Velcro and on and on and on. And then you can go ahead and fill it up with all sorts of fun stuff, little postage stamps, ephemera, tags, more stuff, maybe some stickers. And there you have a little mini thing. It can be part of a swap. Can be gifted to a fellow crafter fellow junk journaler i think it's a whole lot of fun and then of course another thing that you can do with your empty milk cartons is stuff like this where you cut them down and you use sections of it uh, the projects today that i've shown you we've used pretty much the whole thing but here you can see i've embossed it just ran it through my embossing machine and i think the effect is absolutely gorgeous and then you can use this for like faux metal embellishments journal dangles you can make oversized buttons if you've seen my video on making oversized buttons look at that like cut it into a circle pop two holes there and you have a button like a faux button you can use these embossed pieces as a, like faux metal book corners if you trim them down like this they can be tags they can be mini envelopes you can do something like this here we go a little mini envelope going right back to basics of junk journaling that's really cute Oh, how that looks there's plenty of things that we can do and ways that we can go about it this can be covered doesn't have to be i really love how this one looks it looks like actual sheet of metal like aluminium or something like that love it there's plenty of things like i said that you can do and i think these kinds of things will take a whole separate video so i'm going to stop here 
So which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. My favorite is this one here, followed by surprisingly this one. In any case, I hope you feel inspired. The whole point of this exercise is to see everyday items in a whole new life, uh, a whole new light, I suppose, and to give them a whole new life. We can say that we're turning trash into treasure. And by being creative in this way and exercising your creative muscle, you become more creative. You're seeing things in a completely different light, completely different view, and you're creating something out of nothing. So like I said, this can go many different ways with many different outcomes. And I'm really excited to read your comments and to see what other ideas you guys have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.